There is just so much of this cultish crap out there that is so much lies spread by vegans left, right and centre and they just have these dogmatic approaches. I wish I got on this diet way, way sooner. I'm having to deprogram all that vegan propaganda and ideologies and dogma. A vegan diet is destroying so many people's health. Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So I'm here today to respond to a set of videos put out by recent former vegan Danny Glass. And Danny, if you're watching, don't worry, I'm not here to rip you to shreds or destroy you or anything like that. You raised some interesting points that I thought were worthy of being responded to. So here I am. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. So I recently announced in a video after around six years, I am no longer vegan. So he said he's been vegan for six years and just recently started eating animals animal products again and he said he made the switch because he was having some health issues and problems which he said were due to being vegan. It's for almost three months now I have been feeling the worst that I've pretty much ever felt in my life consistently. My energy levels have been very, very low. All right, so I'm not familiar with Danny's content, so I went to his YouTube channel to see what he was doing three months ago diet-wise, and here's what I found. But I am now on a 100% fruit diet, which to a lot of people, that's gonna sound quite crazy and extreme, but this isn't something that is new to me because I've become aware of this diet back in 2014. The reason why I'm on this diet, my body naturally wanted me to do it. So whenever I see someone recently quit being vegan and they were following a raw diet some red flags go off but you know three months isn't really that long of a time but I found out he had done it in the past for two years and I followed it for around two years and guess what happened I ran into so many micronutrient deficiencies. It messed up my testosterone production, my dopamine production. Well, yeah, I'm not a big fan, as most of you guys know, of fully raw or fruitarian diets. I do believe if you stay with them long term, you can get all sorts of health issues, as we've seen with many of these recent former vegans. However, Danny claims here he's had some deficiencies, some vitamin and micronutrient deficiencies from being a raw fruitarian, which might happen, testosterone as well, he said. However, I searched his channel to try to find some kind of blood test results video. I couldn't find one, so I'm kind of wondering if this is just self-diagnosed. Really, you gotta get a blood test. You just can't intuit, hmm, I think I'm a little low in thiamine. But what I did find a whole bunch of on his YouTube channel was video after video after video after video talking about his experiences with fasting. And these videos go back for years and years. It's something he's been doing continuously, it looks like. And all aspects of fasting are discussed here, particularly intermittent fasting. It has tons of videos about intermittent fasting, weight loss and intermittent fasting, how to get shredded through fasting, water fasting. All right, so raw food sent red flags flags off in my mind and now fasting there's more red flags and I went to his Instagram and even more red flags when I saw a post like this talking about cupping to remove toxins and impurities from his body. So I'm personally now having deja vu about the videos I made about Tim Sheaf who was into fasting and raw vegan diets and concerned about toxins and detoxification and the like. And yeah, Tim did other things that weren't particularly good for his health, such crazy stuff like drinking urine, which I'm glad Danny wasn't doing as far as I know. But yeah, others like Ravana, raw alignment, and others I made videos about have this fasting, um, purity, and raw vegan diet background in their history. So anyway, let's get to a vegan doctor who knows a little bit about this, Dr. Garth Davis, and here he talks about people such as all these that I've mentioned who get into veganism yet don't really eat quite enough food. I mean, what really surprises me is when people go to a vegan diet and then they still are portion controlling. They're hardly getting any calories and they feel like crap and they don't know why they feel like crap. For example, in Danny's own words, here's how his way of being vegan left him feeling. I'd almost no sex drive the whole time unless I get massively stimulated, just not being feeling alive or vibrant in my mind and body and it's been affecting me spiritually. Then they take a bite of meat which is loaded with calories and loaded with fat and they get some of this fat back and they feel great and oh my god, veganism killed me. Veganism didn't kill you. Your bad diet killed you. It's, it's just so, I don't know, blatantly obvious to me. Now the science behind whether a plant-based diet's gonna kill you is just, I mean, it's just preposterous to even suggest that it would. It's the healthiest diet you could do. Again, that's Dr. Garth Davis, who eats a very sensible and balanced vegan diet, such as I do, and he's still vegan. He's not having all these weird energy, sex drive, hormone problems, but 
Danny firmly believes that long-term vegans like me and Angie and Dr. Garth Davis should be falling apart. The diet works for them early on, and I've noticed this time and time again, most vegans thrive for around a year or so, and then they start to go downhill, and then they start to blame like stress, or lack of sleep, or exercising too much, or some other things. And they just become very in denial that it's the diet that is affecting them in a negative way. So you guys know I'm not a medical doctor, but we've seen people like, say, Tim Sheaf, Ravana, Raw Alignment, you know, people who had long stints as raw, at raw veganism, and combined that with fasting, developed gut issues. We're talking about like SIBO and IBS. So there's a pretty good chance that Danny might have some Something like that. And Danny, if you're watching, have you seen a doctor yet? If not, I urge you to go visit a gastroenterologist as soon as you can and see what's been going on with your gut. I know no better gastroenterologist than Dr. Angie. Yeah, she's here in California. It might be a little hard for you to come out and visit her. And we were fortunate enough to see her speak at SoCal Veg Fest a few weeks ago about this very talk topic about vegan YouTubers and Instagrammers who eight in these kind of extreme ways, developed health issues, and quit being vegan and blamed veganism on it incorrectly. You guys, be careful who you follow on Instagram. There are a lot of Instagram models who go on three months fasts, like unhealthy fasts. We know that malnutrition is one of the leading causes of SIBO and IBS and gut problems like dysmotility. They do frequent fasting, like 30 day water fast, and they're already malnutrition, BMI of 17 and if you're hearing these Instagrammers who are models, they come out and say veganism caused this, be careful because just because they have a problem doesn't mean veganism caused it. There are a thousand other things. That and as you could probably tell there, Dr. Angie is a vegan and she also eats a balanced, sensible, non-extreme vegan diet and her health isn't going downhill as well. Most vegans thrive for around a year or so and then they start to go downhill. I'm totally wondering where Danny got that statistic from because it sounds like he's either making it up or my guess is he's probably projecting from his own personal experience. I mean, in my case, I've been vegan far longer than he has. I've been vegan nine years and I'm 52 years old and far from falling apart, I'm more athletic now than ever. I'm playing some of the best basketball of my life and I'm even easily putting on strength now that I'm actually trying to. So in one of Danny's videos here, he argues that we need to consume dietary cholesterol in order to have proper levels of sex hormones. When you consume dietary cholesterol, and also when your body produces its own cholesterol, which it does, it will turn it into pregnenolone, which is a specific hormone that then turns into things such as testosterone, estrogen, Vegans say, well, you don't need it because your body produces enough. But what happens on a vegan diet after a long period of time, as so many vegans can show you through their blood results, and I can show you in my blood results here, which they are very, very low. So again, I'm not a medical doctor, but I've done enough blood tests here, put them up on YouTube for you all to see that I know a little bit about LDL cholesterol readings. And I know for a fact, 124 is not low. In fact, any lab I've seen in the United States states that you should be under 100. I'm not sure why in Thailand it says under, under 150, but he has actually a slightly elevated LDL cholesterol levels. And he's right about his HDL, his good cholesterol. That is indeed a little low. You get your cholesterol levels down really low due to not having dietary cholesterol, but they go down so low over a period of time and not having dietary cholesterol that your body is not getting enough cholesterol to produce an abundance of all these different amazing hormones that I mentioned that was in that chart. So then what happens, and this is why so many vegans long term are going back to animal foods, it completely messes up your hormone production, and then you feel like crap mentally and physically. All right, so I will agree that a vegan diet, a sensible, balanced vegan diet has affected my testosterone level, which is really important because I'm age 52. I should have really low testosterone because our production drops off as we age. But if you look at my test that I got done 11 months ago, I'm sorry if you've seen this time and time again, but my level is 744, which is off the charts for a man my age. And it's actually really high for a man in his testosterone producing prime years of late 20s to 30 years old. And again, I'm not some kind of odd freak. This is quite normal for men who follow plant-based diets. If you take men on a high protein diet, meat, fish, poultry, egg whites, and switch them to a high carb diet of bread, vegetables, fruit, and sugary junk, 
their cortisol levels drop about a quarter within 10 days. At the same time, their testosterone levels shoot up by about the same amount. High-protein diets suppress testosterone. And that was Dr. Greger of NutritionFacts.org, who also follows a balanced, sensible, vegan, whole food, plant-based diet. And yet, no wonder why so many of them look malnourished. They're not getting the cholesterol, and then they're not getting certain other nutrients that are really hard to get on this diet. Danny knows quite well that our bodies produce cholesterol naturally, and on my last blood test earlier this year, 2019, as always, I had nice, healthy levels of HDL, good cholesterol, and my LDL, like Danny's, was a little bit above the reference range. Mine was 104. But the hard truth is that meat is high in saturated fat and cholesterol, and saturated fat and cholesterol raise your serum cholesterol score, and elevated serum cholesterol levels are without doubt the number one risk factor for heart disease. So high cholesterol levels are not good. They say, well, meat is carcinogenic. Well, if it's processed garbage meat, then it's going to be carcinogenic for you. So I believe what he's referring to here is how the World Health Organization, a group of scientists, not a vegan organization, classified red meat as a group 2A. That's a probable carcinogen. But if you're getting it from the cleaning sources, such as pasture-raised, grass-fed, organic, free-range, antibiotic-free, and so on, then it will give you amazing health-promoting benefits like it has for me. No, that's not true at all. There's no science whatsoever that shows if you get your meat from the cleanest sources, organic as possible, grass-fed and all that, that the carcinogenic properties of meat somehow suddenly cease to be. Might want to wish for that to happen, but until there's some solid science showing that, you can't really make that claim. I also want to point out that the American Dietetics Association, after reviewing the scientific literature, concluded that appropriately planned, I want to highlight that, appropriately planned vegan diets are safe, healthful, and adequate for people in all phases of life. So this assertion of Danny's that vegan diets are inherently unhealthful is not scientifically justified. So I want to be painfully clear here. I'm not denying in any way that Danny's being untruthful about these health issues that he experienced while vegan. I completely believe him from what I've seen from Tim and Ravana and the others. Yes, extended stints as raw vegans combined with fasting, a pursuit of purity, I've seen leads people to develop issues in their gut, which leads them to stop being vegan eventually, which is why I tell people if you're a raw vegan, you might rethink that because the odds are you might not actually be any sort of vegan in a couple years down the road. So that's why I recommend that people eat a balanced, sensible, whole food, plant-based diet. It might be too late in these people's cases because they've already developed gut issues, which is why I recommend seeing a gastroenterologist. And from the little bit I know about SIBO, it can be typically cured fairly easily with a few rounds of antibiotics. And I think that's worth a go. If you really believe in the vegan ideals of not harming animals, not killing animals in order for you to live, not destroying the environment needlessly for meat, I would suggest looking into visiting a medical doctor and getting yourself checked out, take some antibiotics if that's what they prescribe, and get back to a vegan diet, a sensible, healthy vegan diet, maybe for the first time ever in your guys' life. So again, this is no hate to anyone. I have compassion for what you're going through, and hopefully you might try it out again in this way. So anyway, guys, leave your questions and comments down below. Hit like, share this video, and until next time, guys, remember, let's vote vegan. Yes, I'm running for city council in Long Beach, District 2. If you live in Long Beach, you can vote for me next year in March. And if you live anywhere in the United States, you can contribute to my campaign. Please, everyone, go check out my website, ryanlum.net.